Aleluya. Aleluya. Bible says, seek him while he may be found. Seek him while he may be found. Praise God. Bible says if we come to him, we must believe that he is and is a rewarder of them that seek him diligently. He is a rewarder. Anything you need from God, God rewards what you, when you seek him. Amen. Saying that come to him must believe that he is and is a rewarder. So God is a rewarder. He say he will come back with a reward in his hand. So God does not come as a person. God comes as a parcel. God does not come only as a person. He comes as a parcel. When God comes as a parcel, it means he's coming with his gifts. Amen. Amen. You can never serve God and remain the same. It has never happened in the Bible. It will never happen. Nobody serves God in vain. Anyone that serves God has put themselves on a place of perpetual blessing. Now, this is the truth. That you must serve God. When you serve God, God rewards service. Amen. It is something that is there. It is scriptural. It is there. People think it is just a statement. No. There is serving God and there is a reward. Exodus 23, we take it from verse number 23. Praise the name of Jesus. Exodus 23, 23. Are we in Exodus 23? For my angel will go before you and bring you to the Amorites and the Hittites and Perizzites and the Canaanites and the Havites and Jebusites and I will cut them off. 24. Give me 25. Say, for you shall serve the Lord your God, and he will bless your bread and your water. You will serve your God. You shall serve the Lord your God, and he will bless your bread and your water. And I will take sickness away from the midst of you. So, serving God attracts blessing. You see, I will bless your bread, and then I will bless your water. David said, I was young, now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken or received begging for bread. So, serving God has a reward. Are we in the same place? You cannot serve God in vain. Nobody serves God in vain. He said, and I will take away sickness from your midst. Verse 26. No one shall suffer miscarriage. So it is a covenant that the moment you start serving God, you should not have miscarriage or be barren. Amen. In your land, so not only the barrenness of your womb, but the barrenness of what you're doing. Psalm 67, verse number 5 to 7. So when you serve God, the earth is commanded to yield. Psalm says, then the earth shall yield an increase. God, our own God, shall bless us. Verse, it says, God shall bless us and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. So when you serve God, you are blessed. Can I hear an amen? Job chapter 1, verse number 1. Why was Job wealthy? He was a man who was serving. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job, a man that was blameless and upright, one who feared God and shunned evil. Verse 2. And, and, seven, has, and, and, and seven sons and three daughters were born to him. Also his possession was 7,000 sheep and 3,000 camels, 500 yokes of oxen, 500 female donkeys and a very large house so that this man was the greatest of all in the land of the east. The next verse. And his sons will go and feast in their houses, each one, each on his appointed day, and will send an invite and invite their three sisters to eat and drink with them. It was when the days of the feast that ran their course that Job will send, will send and sanctify them 
and will rise early in the morning and offer burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, it may be that my sons have sinned and cast God in their hearts. That's Job said, did regularly. Verse 5, 6. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to pre present themselves before the Lord. And Satan also came among them. Verse 7. And the Lord said to, someone, to Satan, from where do you come? So Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro on the earth and from walking back and forth on it. Verse 8. Then the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant? So Job was God's servant. Have you considered my servant? Wait. So if Job was a servant of God, now it tells us why. He was the richest man in the east. Why? Because God had blessed him. There is no one that becomes God's servant. Now, God's servant is not the one that is preaching. It is the one that is working for God. Are you hearing me? Anyone that is in kingdom service is a servant of God. God told him, have you considered my servant job? Not my, my worshiper, my servant. If you have considered, say, this man is upright. Now, because he was serving, God made him the richest. Amen. No one serves God and remains the same. It has never happened. Malachi chapter 3. Praise the name of the Lord. Verse number 16. There must be a distinction between them that serve God and them that serve him not. Say, then those who feared the Lord spoke one to another. And the Lord listened and heard them. So a book of remembrance was written before him for those who feared the Lord and who meditate on his name. The next verse. They shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts. On the day that I make them my jewels, I will spare them as a man spare his own son who serves him. So if you serve, you are spared. Spared from lack. Spared from poverty. Spared from sickness, spared from death, spared from barrenness, spared from miscarriage. The next verse, verse 18. Then you shall again disarm between the righteous and the wicked, between who serves God and who does not serve him. So there must be a distinction between our nation. You shall return and you shall notice, you shall be aware. It will be real. You will know. This one is serving God. This one. That's why. Because God will bless them. Are you hearing me? Praise God. Pay, serving God pays. Job, why are you rich? I'm a servant of God. There's no day Job was in the pulpit preaching. There's no day Job. Job was the witness of Christ. People have taken kingdom service to be pastor's work. It is pastor's work to go and serve. That's why we miss it. You shall return and disarm. You will notice. There will be a permanent, very distinctive, there will be a distinction between those who are in kingdom service and those who are not. God is not looking for rich men. God is looking for servants. He said, for the harvest is ripe. Okay. Let pray that the Lord will send laborers. People will go and work for him. Am I communicating here? That's why you cannot serve God and men don't serve you. Anyone that serves God, men will be commanded to serve you. It's a must. I see doors open for someone here. One thing you must understand that kingdom service is God's heartbeat. Anyone that serves God draws close to God. Anyone that gives themselves to kingdom service draws closer to God. Praise God. That is why kingdom service will provoke kingdom rewards. When you serve him, he looks for a way to reward you. Is a rewarder of them that seek him diligently. So 
if there must be kingdom reward, if God has to reward you, one of the rewards is health. There is no sickness in your midst. You cannot be sick. It is wrong for you to be sick and you're serving God. It is wrong for you to be barren in business, barren in life. You have no fruit and you're serving. It is illegal. It's against the scriptures. It is wrong for you to be broke and you're serving. It's against the scriptures. You can see through the examples. God said in Psalms 89, verse 20, I have found David, my servant, not my king, not my child. I have found David, my servant, with my holy oil. I've anointed him. Give me the next verse. Look at what God will do. Verse 21. With whom my hand shall be established by him, I will establish my hand. Also my arm shall strengthen him because he's serving me. The next verse, 22. He says, the enemy shall not outwit him, no devil, no enemy, nor the sons of wickedness afflict him. As he's serving me, no one is permitted to afflict him. From today, nobody will afflict you. There will be no affliction. I will beat down his force before his face and plague those who, if you hate David, God plagues you. Give me another version. Maybe message by on NLT. Serving God as rewards. I'm telling you. Most people have not just connected well with kingdom service. Amen. Give me verse, that's verse number 20. Verse, verse 20. Verse 20. I have found my servant, David. I have anointed him with my holy oil. I will steady him with my hand. With my powerful arm, I will make him strong. 22. His enemies will not defeat him. Nor will the wicked overpower him. Because he's my servant. The enemies will not overpower him. Let all the witches come together. They cannot. Why? He's my servant. He's my servant. He's my servant. Not because he's praying too much. He's my servant. But the virtue is my servant. I will beat down his adversaries before him and destroy those who hate him. Anyone that hates David, you're in trouble with God. The next verse. He said, my faithfulness and unfailing uh, love will be with him and my authority, he will grow in power. By my authority, he will grow in power. So David, you will grow in power. Why? You're serving me. You're serving me. But as you serve God, may you grow in power. May God establish you by his power that Amen can be better. Kingdom service carries reward. It's true. The truth. Very true. Just that we don't know how to serve God and to serve him well. How can you serve God and you're sick? You're broke. Unless the scriptures are a lie. Are they? Is God a liar? Mass is God a liar. He said, everything will pass away, but my word will stand forever. And the words of God are here in the man, forever established in heaven. So whatever God says, I hear in the man. So whatever he said, he said in Isaiah 55 verse 11, he says, so is my word that comes out of my mouth. It shall not come back to me void. It will fulfill the purpose thereof. Where I sent it, it must fulfill. So if I said I will not allow his enemies to exact over him, final. Nobody can change it. Somebody say Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. One thing you must understand, it pays to serve God. It pays. And it pays well. The way God can reward you, nobody on earth can reward you. You can be faithful to your boss till you die. He can never reward you as God can reward you. You can meet as a good man as, as you know, but he cannot reward you as God can reward you. That is why when you serve God well, he said, thou shalt serve the Lord your God with all your might. Because the blessing is there with all your heart. Because the blessing is there with all your strength. Everything, if, if, matter of fact, God made it a commandment when you serve me. That's where I begin blessing people from. Say amen. As you serve God, may you enjoy reward. May you see reward. Say, may you see reward. May you see reward. May you see reward. 
May you see reward. May you see reward. Sir, Sa serving God pays. Serving God carries reward. Being in kingdom service is putting yourself on a highway of perpetual blessing. Don't be too busy for God. Never. Amen. He said, Job is my servant. Joshua chapter 1. Why was Moses great? I will show you. Joshua 1.1. 1, 1. Why was Moses great? After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, not the prophet of God. Moses was the prophet. God does not call him prophet. He said, my servant. God is looking for servants. He said, after the death of Moses, the servant of of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the uh, son of Nun, Joshua's assistant, say. So, he said, good God, verse, verse, the next verse, verse 3. It's, God is talking about Moses. Says, Go back, verse 2. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all these people to the land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel. The next verse. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon I have given you, as I said to Moses, he's my servant, I spoke to him. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, as far as Great River, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites and to the great sea towards going down to the sun shall be your territory. He said, before you go far, this land I've given to Moses, I'll give it to you. No man shall be able to stand before you. You and all the you, all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. So God was with Moses. You cannot serve God and not God be with you. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. Come on. Why was God with Moses? Because he was the servant of God. Sir. When you are a servant of God, God is with you. Say, Joshua, don't fear. I was with Moses. He was my servant. I was with him. The Bible says, if God be for us, who can be against us? You need to be God's servant for you to see God's blessing. God is not looking for spectators. He is looking for participators. You must participate to be blessed. Somebody say amen. That is why as Job was God's servant, the devil said in, in Job chapter 1 verse 9, he said, have you not put a hedge on him? So no devil could touch Job because Job was serving God, could put a hedge. So Satan answered the Lord and said, does Job fear God for nothing? Have you not made a hedge around him? Around his household? God, you have not only put a hedge on Job, you have put it on him around his household and around all that he has on every side. Anything that Job has, his kettle, his chicken, his, 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 his donkeys, his servants, his children, you have put a hedge. Uh -uh. So I cannot touch Job. I have desired, I've been going to and fro on the earth looking for a way I can enter that Job. But this man is your servant. You have put a hedge. So when you serve God, there is an edge over your head. No devil can touch you. If the devil is finding his way, the question is, is your kingdom service wanting? He said, and then what? You have blessed all the works of his hands. And his possession has increased in the land. So, he's not only covered or protected. The man also, whatever he's doing, God, you have blessed it. Shish. Then not only have you blessed it, you are increasing the man. So, the more he's serving, you're increasing him. Sir, why not serve God? I said, this man, you're increasing him. Kingdom rewards. The rewards of God. You serve him, he increases you. He covers you. He protects you. No barrenness. No miscarriage. It is the only promise. It is the only thing you do. And you're covered everywhere. It is, the, it is the, one of the things you do and every area of your life is taken care of. Your children covered. Your dogs covered. Your cats covered. Your business covered. Your own life covered. Your wife covered. You go down this 
way, you're increasing. You're touching business, it grows. The devil is doing for you, can't find you. You are not sick, you are not lacking, you are increasing, you are blessed. What else? Amen. May the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. As you serve it, may the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. Your kingdom service will attract rewards in the name of Jesus. People that don't serve can never be served. So you have put a hedge on him. Not only have you put a hedge, this man I can't touch. Amen. If you know that you are blessed, which devil will touch you? Matter of fact, you can be careless. Bible says the error because they know the scripture. Know the power of God. That's what they, they go wrong. There are things you will do, not because you're careless. You know the scripture. Why should you lack bread? Psalm 39. Say, a young lion do suffer and go hungry. Uh -uh. But them that seek the Lord will lack nothing good. Why should you lack? Sir, lack is not for everyone. There are people who are saved, who are praying in tongues, and they have no bread. But the others, they are throwing away bread. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, I am not saying you should be careless with God's blessing. But the way God blesses, you should not repeat a meal. Can I repeat? The way God blesses, you should not repeat what? A meal. God told them, I will give you manna fresh every day. So when you go out, collect for today. Tomorrow there will be fresh manna. And God told them, if you try to be smart and you hide, the ones you have taken extra, they will rot. So they were gathered every day, fresh manna. Now, people think manna was one thing. No, no, no. Manna was different. Manna means what is this? That's the meaning of manna. So every day, they were wondering, what is this? What is this? Everything they were eating, it was, it was mind-boggling. There's kitchen in heaven. Ask Elijah. Meat and bread. Who was preparing it? The man is sleeping. Meat, bread for breakfast. Meat, bread, dinner. Meat, bread. Ah! There's kitchen in heaven. So why should you lack? You lack because you are not serving God well. And he's not only serving, serving him with your heart. Sir, why should you put your back on hospital bed and yet God, you're serving a living God? It's not possible unless we, scriptures are a lie. Unless this book is a lie and God is a liar. And Bible says, let every man be a liar and God be true. So God will never lie. Sir, if you engage in kingdom advancement, if you engage in kingdom service, then you will experience kingdom reward. There are things when you do, there are some prayers you forget praying. Say this one. No, it's working. I decree nobody here will be sick in Jesus' name. Nobody here will experience any barrenness in the name of Jesus. Whatever you do shall multiply in Jesus' name. That amen is very tired. That amen can be better. I decree none of your children will be oppressed. The enemy will not exert any wickedness upon your children. God will beat down your enemies in Jesus' name. By the arm of the Lord, you shall be strengthened. Receive it in the name of Jesus. The Lord empower your destiny. It is possible to go forward without struggle. serve God, it pays. And you serve God, he puts a hedge. Say, this one you cannot touch. You cannot touch his business. No. You cannot touch it. You are not permitted to touch his life. You are not permitted. The devil knows how far to come when you're serving God. He knows. And the farthest he can come is it cannot come at all because there's no space. Are you hearing me? In simple words, serving God is working for God. And all the skills of it. Simply put, serving God is working for God. Being in God's kingdom. Haggai chapter 2. 
Verse number four. Agai 2 4. Kingdom serving God is working for God. I am in God's vineyard. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He says, Ye now, yet now be strong. Oh, Zerubbabel, says the Lord. Be strong, Joshua, son of Jehoshadak, the high priest, and be strong, all you people of the land, says the Lord. And walk, for I am with you, says the Lord of hosts. Walk. Uh -huh. Verse 5. According to the word that I covenanted with you, when you came out of Egypt, so my spirit remains among you. Do not fear as you serve me. Verse 6. For that is the Lord of us. Once more, it is a little while, and I will shake heaven and shut up and see and dry land. First Corinthians 15, 58. Serving God is simply working for God. First Corinthians 15, 58. First Corinthians 15, 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Knowing that your labor is not in vain. In the Lord. Uh -huh. So kingdom service is working for God. And he's saying as you're doing it, put it at the back of your mind. It is not in vain. So God will reward every labor. Are you hearing what I'm saying? As you put your hands to serve God, God will reward you. And that amen can be better. That amen can be better. That amen can be a louder one. As I serve, as I am immovable, steadfast, always abounding, I am there serving. Say, good. Don't forget, give me an LT or message. You say, don't be worried. And the Bible says, God shall not forget your labor of love. Why are you serving God? Because you love him. If you love him, you know for, he's not in vain. Say, with all this going for us, my dear brethren, dear friends, stand your ground and do not hold back. Throw yourself into the work of the master. Throw yourself. You do pay. Jay, I like that. In the work of the master, confident that nothing you do for him is a waste of time or effort. Nothing you do for him is a waste of time and effort. Abba. So there's nothing I'm... Abba. God pays well. Are you hearing me? Anyone that serves God has put himself on the highway of blessing. He said, there is nothing you do for God that God forgets it. Give me amplified. God does not forget what you're doing. He said, now, let your hands work. Work in my kingdom. As you do that, it's not in vain. And God begins to pay you. How well do you think he can pay you? Your boss just increases with 10% your salary. You're happy. Matter of fact, tomorrow you will go to work by 4 a.m. You are happy. Then God says, I want to bless you. And me, I don't bless 10%. I bless 100, 100 fold. Ah! 100 times. Chai! Therefore, my beloved brethren, be firm, steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, always being superior, excelling, doing more than enough in the service of the Lord. Doing more than enough. In the service of the Lord, knowing and being continually aware that your labor in the Lord is not futile. It is never wasted or to no purpose. It is never wasted. Amen. Let me tell you, you might be going out for God and it looks as if you're wasting time. It is not wasting time. One day, God will reward you. He said you shall return and you will discern. People will see there's a difference, this one and this one. They will know. They will know. And the best thing about when God rewards you, it is not for 10 years. It's not for 3 months. It's eternity. Bible says a hundredfold year on earth and then eternal life. That's why a genuine servant of God does not go up and come down. No, sir. He goes from glory Second Corinthians 3, 18. Glory to glory. Can I hear an amen here? Praise the name of the Lord. Very important. Very important. I want to urge you. There are prayers you pray. For you to see God work. 
engage in kingdom service. I'll be teaching you how do you engage. Amen. Kingdom service carries kingdom reward. So, when you are when you are out for God, God goes out for you. When you give yourself to God, God gives Himself to you. Say, "You shall be mine," said the Lord. I will make you my jewel, my special people, peculiar people. You are my jewel, very precious. Not everybody. There are people if the devil wants to touch, God Himself moves. How do I know? They wanted to stone Stephen. Now, Bible says Jesus is seated at the right hand of God the Father. True. Huh? True. That's what the Bible says. But when they took stones to, to stone the, uh, Stephen in Acts chapter 12, when they were stoning him, Jesus stood. Said this one. It is Stephen that stopped God, Jesus, from reacting on his behalf. Jesus that was seated stood up. Say, huh? Stephen is my servant. He's here doing a crusade. You are killing him. He said, my father, forgive them. For they do not know what they are doing. Give it to me. Acts chapter 12, verse 1. This is the one. I think so. There, no, 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 no. So I'm, I'll get it just now. They took stones to stone Stephen. Jesus stood up. The same Jesus who was seated stood up. To do what? God defends those that serve him. When others are being stoned, I did not care. I said, kill that one. That one is used to kill that one. But this one, you cannot touch. Why? This one is my servant. Should be Acts 6 or Acts 7, somewhere there. So, they choose Stephen, man full of the Holy Ghost. And Stephen went out to preach the gospel. As he went out to preach the gospel, I would say they began to, they took stones to stone him. And Stephen lifted his eyes and he saw Jesus standing. Meaning he was ready to come to his defense. He said, forgive them. Jesus went back and sat down. Me, I cannot say forgive them. Say, scatter. <laughs> yeah, Acts 7. And they stoned Stephen and he was calling on God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Go back. He said, as they were stoning him, I would say, he lifted up his eyes and said, Father, forgive them. So, and he, being full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven. And so the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Bible says he's seated. So how can a sitting Jesus now stand? If you go verse 1, you discover Stephen was very busy talking to me about the kingdom of God. He was evangelizing. So God was there. Say, I don't want to kill the man that is into my service. Are you mad? Jesus told them, I am about doing my father's business. And you want to kill me? He said, do it. But don't you know that even now I can call legions of angels? Anyone that serves God, God is ready to defend. He says, no, 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 but I'll not do that. This man must be fulfilled. Matter of fact, what you're doing is for greater gain. So, but angels are ready to enter into war. Now they're ready. So anyone that's in kingdom service, God is ready to get involved. You cannot touch them. He said, he said, the hand of his enemies will not harm him. I refuse. No. David is my servant. You will not do anything. I will react. Are you hearing me? So Stephen, me, thank God I'm not Stephen, I'm Bernard. Could have told God, appear in your fire. Appear in your thunder. Stephen died like, like a chicken. But maybe that's how it was supposed to go. Are you hearing me? That means if he never wanted to die, he could have said, Father, let fire fall. Elijah did not want to go. He called fire. Elijah was a servant of God. He said, ah, me, you will not take me. I know how. He's a wicked man. If I go there, he will chop off my head. I'm not coming. I know what the wife did to, uh, to that, that man called Naboth. They stoned him to death. I'm not ready to die. He said, if there be a man of God, let fire bam. And because he mentioned them, I'll be a man of God. The they said, if I be a servant of God. Fire came, roasted them. They became Jamachoma. Second group, roasted. Third group, roasted. Why? God was ready to intervene. 